Case high meets monthly, Lincoln is quarterly, or I mean, is that we just get that information? I'll do that now before we get there. Yeah, I can find out. I honestly don't know exactly how, how everyone is. I mean, they're different types. Statute, they just yeah. have to meet annually, so that right. they could meet as little as one time, or they could meet as many as 12 times. Or, so I can ask, I can get that schedule. I can ask the president. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I had a question, uh, and I visited with Ron, and he did some homework for me on the, not just the walk-in freezer bid, but I had talked to other board members, and uh, I didn't know. Uh, when we're looking at a bid, and uh, you have a local vendor that is a 1%, 2% higher than the lowest bid, is there a requirement that you go with the local bid? I mean, the uh, lowest bid, or can you ex move to a local bidder? You can you can move to a local bidder if it's within a certain percentage of the bid. I can't remember what that figure is. I, I could not find that in our policy. Okay, well, that's state statute. Yeah, our state, yeah, state statute. statute. The, the only thing I refer to. But what you do, you have to go back to your local bidder and allow them to bid it at the same amount as the lowest bid if it's within that percent. Okay. So you still are paying the lowest bid. You're still paying and just but you go to the local contract. And if the local contractor says no, no. It says the board policy updates. Mm -hmm. uh, it says discuss the KSB recommended board policy updates, but we had one that was not part of that, so that's not listed. We only had a certain amount that were. Recommended yeah, one that was ours. Right. DCBD is the policy that was not not in the KSB. Right. So, but that's not indicated on in the minutes anywhere. We indicate that somewhere. Sure. Well, we'll make that sure. And yes, I think I didn't notice that because it was in the minute last time. But it was, well, I think it was a recommended change from our. Yeah, actually, we just need to get rid of the KSB. But you're right. You know what? Uh, okay. We'll take that out. Take that out right now. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 That is not a KSB recommended. No, I would just take out that it that fixes it, I guess. I was going to approve the recommended policy that we just take out the KSB. That's for us. Go ahead. Ah, I got you. Okay, any more discussion about the consent agenda? We're going to put the consent agenda on multiple occasions. I'm going to follow up on my question earlier uh, with Bill on uh, 2.7. The walk-in freezer. Can we pull that out and discuss with this board and see whether we want to take it to the local vendor to meet the most bid? Yes, Bill. What? Yes, Bill. What question does it be? I asked Bill, and he thought it was one or two percent. I don't recall exactly what it is. Oh, if you want to move something out of the Senate, then just make a motion. I move the. Uh, well, I don't know. Now you have to make a motion. Let's move it to 2.7. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the entire agenda as written. Do I have a second? I have a second one. Another one. And a third. All right. All in favor of the. Uh, do we have discussion? I'm sorry, go ahead. Yes, uh, Mike, I talked to you earlier. Is that is this where we put in where we might have an executive session before we. Yes, well, I, I, uh, I might. Yeah, where does that, that go in the agenda? My plan was to get to that point, discuss it, and then if you don't have to vote on it, you can have an executive session, then come back and vote on it. Any more discussion? Okay. All in favor of the agenda, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? William State. Motion passes. Michelle, are you on Zoom? Okay. Motion passes six, I mean seven to zero. You're watching, wait. Now we're back at the consent agenda. And we did move the 2.7 walk-in freezer out of the consent agenda. And we modified some language. It looks like I'm looking at the KSD bid guidance stuff. It looks like it's one percent. One percent. It says the amount of the bid of the school district dormitory <coughs> is not more than one percent greater than the amount of the low bid. And I mean, there's two or three of the bullets are all free. But yeah, it looks like it's the one percent. That increase that to go for it. Agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Motion to approve the consent agenda passes 7 to 0. Vote oh, oh, electronically the same way. Yeah. <coughs> Alright, next item on the agenda is our recognitions. Uh, USD 49. 489 Achievement of Excellence Recognition. You want to take it or should I go yeah, ahead? No, okay. thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I want to recognize Mr. Straw tonight. He is in the audience, so we're thankful that uh, Mr. Straw was recently selected as the state KMEA, uh, Kansas Music Educators Association uh, Administrator of the Year. Uh, Mr. Straw wins this award because he is, uh, or he was presented this award at the Hayes High School Winter Concert uh, on January 11th uh, by the KMEA State President, Dave Phillips. Mr. Straub has shown consistently through his work, words and deeds that he values a fine arts education as an integral part of a student's education. Uh, Mr. Straub would quickly to the Northwest uh, KMEA District Honor Administrator of the year previously. And uh, congratulations to Mr. Straub. He is also known as the Alvarani of all the principals. I guess he can sing. Uh, I tried to get him to sing in administrator meeting the other day, but he did he declined. But uh, I heard from good sources that he is an incredible singer. So I know that. Mr. Straub, congratulations. I guess we can get you up to sing a few bars if you yeah. want. Yeah, please say, say a few words if you want to. No, I was just going to hopefully introduce. Uh, well, before you do that, I think, I've been to many, many site council meetings at Hayes High over the last three or four years. And I haven't done any singing yet. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's, nice, it's nice to learn something new every day, right? So I'd like to go forward and introduce the people. <laughs> I'm going to introduce John Lynn. And Rather than you listen to, to me say everything, these guys have a lot to offer and know their field better than I do. So I'm going to introduce John, he'll introduce the next person, and then I'll finish up. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. It is my privilege to stand up here and talk to you this evening about CTE in Hayes High School. Um, our CTE classes have, have continued to maintain a, a high number of participants every year. Uh, we held steady this year with 846 students enrolled in our CTE classes. Uh, 
Obviously, some of those 846 are repeats. They take more than one CTE class, but our numbers are excellent. Uh, in most years, because of space restrictions and Perkins CTE requirements and guidelines, uh, we have to prioritize and sometimes we, we turn students away because we are full. Uh, these classes are very popular, and I just want to briefly talk about the nine pathways that we have that we have to offer. Uh, the first one is Digital Media Pathway, and that is run by Mr. Dan Ballman. We have a web and digital communication pathway that is headed by Heath Mater. We have a business finance pathway headed by Lindsay Hart. Marketing pathway headed by Shana Pro. A comprehensive ag science pathway headed by Nicole Winter. Architecture and construction pathway headed by Chris Dinkle. A production pathway headed by Alex Ford. Restaurant and events management pathway headed by Swan Tebow. And family, community, and consumer services pathway headed by Michelle Thacker. Um, I will tell you that I'm, I'm ex extremely proud of our CTE instructors, as I am all of our teachers at Hayes High. I think they do a tremendous job of promoting their programs uh, and providing awesome experiences for our, for our students. And that goes to show you every year with the number of students that are taking CTE classes every year. Uh, so I'm, I'm very proud of every one of them. I want to talk about Michelle Thacker and, and John Hayflugger this year uh, and our Helping Hands classes have teamed up with our counselors uh, this year to help run our school pantry. And these food items are distributed to needy families on a weekly basis. The pantry has fit very nicely into the event plant plan and management and community connections classes that make up a portion of our Helping Hands program, which is part of our restaurant and event management pathway. So it ties right in. The students have conducted a food drive. They go shopping for the pantry. They've maintained the inventory. Uh, Helping Hands also prepare sandwiches that go into the weekly food boxes, which are sent home with our Hayside families that are in need. The pantry has been very fortunate this year to have such a large number of donors. They've received a lot of monetary support and a lot of non-perishables. And then the Helping Hand students do a great job of following up with sending um, thank you notes to the donors. They've done a wonderful job with this project, uh, which helps so many of our most needy families. Another area that we, we changed this year is our Allied Health program. And some of you probably heard, but in the Allied Health part of this. Uh, we worked last year on a plan to increase our numbers in Allied Health through NCK. And because of the opening of the Early Childhood uh, Connection Center, Tina Albers and the preschool class moved from our building to the ECC. And we knew this was going to happen, so we met with NCK to see what the possibilities were of having the Allied Health classes in our building. And NCK providing the instructor to come to our building and, and teach our students. Uh, we were able to create a lab, and I don't know, do you have the, the next, there we go. We were able to create a lab which was room, in room 152, uh, and 151 and 152 are connecting in the classroom. We uh, were assisted by Hayes Med. Hayes Med donated uh, beds and equipment to the Allied Health Program. NCK brought over supplies and other items to help complete the lab, which is in, the, in room 151 shown up there. This year, NCK allowed Janet Donnelly, she taught the CNA and the CMA classes in the past, to teach from our building. And along with Brian Deckett, who teaches the medical terminology uh, portion of Allied Health, the program has grown for our, our goals and, and our high expectations. Uh, in the fall of this year, we had 22 students earn their CNA certification, and that was phenomenal. It was a big jump from the previous year. Right now, we have 16 students here in the spring working towards their CMA certification. Uh, the partnerships we built have been great. We're proud of the direction that they're going, that these programs are going. So, very proud of of Jana and of Brian and all the students who earned their certifications 
here in the fall. Some other certifications that, CNA, uh, that our CTE teachers uh, offer through, our, through Mrs. Hart's class are the Microsoft certifications. And uh, students can earn a Microsoft Office Specialist, Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint. They can earn those certifications. We didn't have any in the spring of last year because we were cut off in the middle of the semester because of COVID. But we have, we have had students earn certifications in Microsoft in the past. And I'm telling you, all these certifications uh, are extremely important to our students and helps them prepare for jobs once they leave high school and for some of them once they're, uh, while they're in high school. So we're very proud of that. I want to talk to you about the improvements or the updates we've made in our e-building. And the, 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 uh, this page shows the, basically the e-building rooms. As part of phase one, we renovated the storage room, which up there is, is was room 503. And we created a studio lab for our audio video production classes with Mr. Ballman. Uh, we were able to utilize room 504 for his classroom. We placed a door between 503 and 504. 504 is his classroom and his lab is now 503. If you haven't seen the updated lab, uh, the rooms, it, it's created a great working space for our audio visual classes. The lab, which is 503, includes a video room, a computer lab, and a soundproof room for recording. Um, Mr. Mader's classroom, which was 504, uh, he, he needed a place, so we renovated the space. Up there, it's room 153. It's 154 now, where it says graphic design. Uh, it was a little underutilized previously. Uh, it's used for our functional special ed students. So we placed a wall in that room, and it split the room in two. We still have a very nice apartment-like feel for our functional students, uh, but we created a very nice computer graphics, graphic design classroom, and it turned out amazing. Um, so if, if you get a chance to take a look at them, they're just they're, they're great. Um, so for phase two, which is what we're going to do this summer, our next step is to demo room 509. That's Mr. Uh, Dinkle's class was, excuse me, Mr. Ballman's classroom. And uh, there's going to be a door installed between 508 and 509. Mr. Dinkle will teach from these rooms. Part of 509 will include a video editing room. This is going to be remodeled to house a materials and processes room, such as a laser cutter, 3D printer, screen printing, um, a screen printing machine and some additional material testing items. The front of the room in uh, 509 will be remodeled to include our sustainable energy uh, studies, such as wind energy, solar energy, geothermal, and other things. It will also include robotics and be equipped for some scale modeling and other research studies. So that's our goal for 50, 509. And then we're going to update 508 with new student labs, new flooring, and this will be the engineering graphics classroom. Uh, it's now used for AutoCAD technical applications and research and design classes for Mr. Dinkle. So the, the, the phase two of that will be this summer, and then phase three, which will be the following summer, will be renovating the art classrooms. And we can talk about more of that, uh, more of that in the future. Um, the last thing I want to discuss is recently Mr. Straub and I met with Corey Isbell, Vice President of Student Instructional Services at, at uh, NCK Tech, as well as Steve Hudman, the Vice President of Hayes Campus, and then Dylan Bell, an NCK welding instructor, to discuss a partnership uh, with our welding program at Hayes High School. The basic reasoning reason for the meeting was to figure out how we can provide, provide our students more opportunities to earn welding cert, uh, certifications while attending Hayes High School. What we discussed with them was similar to what we did with uh, the Allied Health Program, with NCK. We have periods of the day where the welding shop is not used because our welding instructor, Mr. Alex Ford, teaches woods also. So he's in the wood shop 
and the lab is, uh, or the uh, welding shop is, is left open for a few periods. Um, so we talked to NCK about providing an instructor during these certain periods to open up more classes, more opportunities for our students. Typically our welding classes get maxed out. It is very, um, our students really like those classes. Uh, because of the enrollment requirements by the state, it had a lot to do with safety with CTE and Perkins. And so those classes max out fairly quickly. Um, Alex Ford, who is our welding instructor, is also willing to, to uh, earn his CWE, which is a certi certified welding educator certification, and in, in his licensure. So he can help uh, NCK with part of that welding technology certification program. And he'll be, he'd be a certified education welder. And he, he'll be able to help get our kids certified. Uh, these classes are part of Senate Bill 155, and there would be tuition free. NCK's also discussed the donation of several welding machines. That would be a huge benefit to our, to our shop now, and Hayes High School and our students. We felt the meeting went extremely well and we're excited about the possibility of helping our students prepare for for the real world application uh, we know there's a high demand for welders in our area um, and this program will only help our students attain uh, work once they leave Hayes high school so as you can see we have a lot of great things happening in regards to, to cte at Hayes high i uh, want to thank the board of education for your continued support of all things cte and all things Hayes high school we feel like we're heading in a very positive direction. Uh, the, the communication that, that, that we've had with NCK, with Fort Hayes, uh, it's been awesome. And so we're looking forward to still making improvements along the way uh, to better prepare our students to, to compete in the workforce because it is a very competitive world. So, any questions? Well, I want to say one thing real quick and then we can ask questions. John, I've always been impressed with the faculty, uh, the teachers at uh, USD 49, and especially the high school, the being uh, proactive and innovative and coming up with new ideas, and I think it's fantastic, collaborating, collaborating, cooperating with <coughs> NCK, they can only benefit our kids, so that's fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. John, I just have one question, and like I said, I think these are outstanding programs, and, and they just continue to grow, and that shows there's a need there. And uh, the one question I do have, with the certification, let's say with welding and uh, CNA, CMA, are those open to our students that are attending the learning center? Do you know that or not? They would have to go through those programs. They so would have no. So no. Not while they're in the learning center, they can't go through. We, well, we do have, uh, I think, a student right now who is a learning center student who still goes through the Allied Health Program. Yes. We have not had any, anyone that, that was interested at this point. Oh, okay. I would think that, that it probably would be. We haven't had a discussion about that one way or the other. So sure. Sure. I think we wanna we wanna try to benefit as many students as we can yeah. with these with these opportunities. That, that, is a, that would be a good idea. It only prepares them for going out there and competing. Oh. You're very welcome. Any more questions or comments? What we added a one staff member to help with the set this year that we had a half position. Yeah, we had a half position for the wood shop area. So he does teach some of our a couple of our uh, woods classes in the mornings, and then he goes to the, the middle school in the afternoon. Is the enrollment uh, maintaining or is it oh, growing yes. or? Yeah, we feel like if we can get instructors in those rooms we will fill them because we we have to make adjustments on student schedules all the time to uh, normally it's the younger kids who have to wait until the older kids get through the programs uh, and so a lot of the times we have to adjust readjust their schedules because they we can't fit it in so we're hoping that with the addition of the NCK classes with welding that's going to open up some more areas for us so and, and allow more kids to take classes, which if they're taking more welding classes, it might open some more open some more uh, spots in the, yeah. the woods program too. So, all right. Thank you. 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 Thank
are those staff positions pretty hard to fill still? I think almost every staff position is hard to fill right now. <laughs> but yes, they are difficult to fill. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Fred Winter. Thank you. It's my pleasure to present to the board today. I'd like to thank John for making it really difficult. I do the master schedule, so when we talk about numbers, there's a lot. There's a lot of, unfortunately, we've had to turn kids away. We want to be in those programs, but as they continue to grow and continue to develop, we've got a lot of opportunities. For those kids, so we're excited about those. <clears throat> what I'm going to visit with you about tonight is uh, all things that are testing, uh, also with uh, PCR. Uh, and there's a few things that tie <clears throat> tie into that. Uh, my responsibilities as a test coordinator, uh, we start with the STAR testing when they're freshmen. All freshmen tested uh, fall, winter, and spring. Uh, that's all 200 plus uh, freshmen that do take it. Uh, then after that, our SPED students continue to take it as they measure their progress uh, through Hayes High. <clears throat> uh, as we go through that uh, this year and everything I will talk about, uh, all of our testing has been uh, COVID distancing. Uh, anytime we do tests, we are more or at least six feet away or farther uh, with our masks on because and we've had to have add another testing uh, site or uh, another testing time uh, to be able to get all uh, <coughs> students tested uh, to be able to to honor that because we want to be safe and we've been very successful uh, at that. I have to thank a lot of the custodians uh, for help setting all of that up. Counselors have, are great at Hayes I can't say enough good things about them because they help prepare for that. And also with the uh, testing, uh, working with kids, uh, for their future as we progress. The pre-ACT is another uh, test that we take, an exam that freshmen take. <clears throat> and again, we have to, uh, it's a window uh, in the fall uh, when we take that. So we have two testing periods this, uh, this, this fall with the freshmen back to back. Uh, the pre-ACT uh, started last year by the state of Kansas. It's a free test, it's free. We're paying for taxpayers' dollars go towards uh, funding these uh, exams for students. One of the things uh, the pre-ACT does is it's one of the first times as a whole that these students are taking a formal test uh, that is timed. And so uh, it gets them into a testing mode that a lot of times the way we talk about is we, you know, the best way to practice and get better at doing something is to do it. So at the freshman level, we start there. Uh, what is great about the KSD program is we do have a follow-up. We meet with the freshmen after they get the results back, and we communicate to the parents as well. Uh, the, uh, they get a result sheet that will go into their uh, cumulative file, and then also one that goes home along with the exam itself, uh, the questions, so they can evaluate um, you know, how they did, what questions, and why they answered in that way. Uh, in my presentation, when I follow up with a freshman, we talk about ACT and how does it benefit, what's the value of uh, ACT and, and grade point average. It's a great, a great opportunity as freshmen come into high school. Your grades matter and also testing matters because it results in uh, cash, it results in scholarships uh, for their future. And a lot of kids, and what we discuss about a lot of programs that they can get involved in. So. Uh, we show them uh, Division I, Division II, and other <laughs> colleges, uh, and how the diverse amounts of GPA, the value of the GPA, and their ACT score. So we're hoping that some of them will sink in, and then as they go to the future, that they need to talk to their counselor, or their parents, and make sure they make a plan for their future. So we do that, we follow up right before they do their uh, spring uh, enrollment for next year as a sophomore. So that leads to a lot of good discussions, what their goals and dreams are. Also with Zello, Zello is a program uh, that they do during prime time. Uh, there's also an interest inventory in the pre-ACT and the ACT itself to develop <coughs> a direction of what their career goals and plans are. 
which also leads into the CT area, CTE area as they go farther into what their, their uh, career is. Uh, as they get into be a sophomore, then they take the pre-SAT, which is a PSAT, it's not required. Uh, the pre-ACT, all freshmen do take that. And the PSAT, uh, they volunteer to take it. Now, they, there's no scholarship uh, requirement to be, or excuse me, qualifications for that until their junior year. <coughs> but it is a prep for the ACT and the junior year PSAT. So it is another opportunity for sophomores to practice at testing uh, time and formal setting uh, to get ready for the following year. KSD state assessments, math, English, and language arts is uh, what they test, and we'll be uh, preparing that this spring. We were unable to test that last spring due to the COVID uh, pandemic. Last fall, excuse me, this fall, uh, we had Reality U come, and uh, what that is is a life lab. I don't know if anybody here was able to be a part of that. Uh, it's where we have uh, the United Way actually uh, pays for us and uh, also puts it on at TMP. And so they provide the volunteers and the helpers. And this year was really fun because they called, uh, used our leadership team uh, due to, you know, we wanted to limit the numbers of outside uh, people coming into our building this year. And so it was a great opportunity for our seniors leaders to also get involved in that and we set it up in an appropriate way where everyone was six feet apart uh, the presenters were six feet I doubled up with the tables so we were able to uh, provide distancing uh, <clears throat> the uh, presenter Patrick Seal is from Goddard and he was very impressed with our high school uh, our our teachers and our kids and how well uh, we had our you know, you know everybody was continuing to to work towards uh, being educated and having the reality use. So it's a life at 26, uh, and they went through that with the outside um, sponsors, and it was a great event. And, we, and that's just for sophomores, and we hope to provide that every year in the United Way partnership with them. And lastly, juniors, our pre-ACT, uh, that's for the National Merit uh, Scholarship Qualifier. Uh, currently, if you've been watching the news and uh, other, you know, Andrew Duke has also been uh, a uh, semi national semifinalist, and so uh, we're very proud of him uh, to be able to get that award. And then as we go further, the ACT and work keys, ACT and work keys, their junior year again, it's uh, provided by the state, which uh, started uh, two years ago, and uh, KSD pays for that exam. And again, we lead the students towards that first test their junior year. And it is a free test, and we talked about the importance of it. Work keys is another exam state pays for. Uh, if they choose not to take the ACT their junior year because uh, they're planning on going into the workforce, then uh, what that does is it provides them with a platinum, gold, silver, bronze uh, certificate, uh, and will tell them what their workability and their skills are as they go out into the workforce. They can put it on their uh, resume and be able to uh, uh, have that have to hang on and then also some companies recognize that when they go to hire and qualify candidates <clears throat> that year their junior year uh, they take their state assessments in science and social studies every other year this year they only do science senior class uh, they take their ACT continually uh, uh, through the on Saturdays and then they work on college interest exams, also the scholarship uh, competitions, and then again, now they're taking uh, concurrent credit classes, CNA, farm tech, safe food handling, and other certificates that Mr. Lynn also elaborated on. So thank you, Mr. Lynn. <clears throat> Parent Choice Remote, so I'm gonna hit a little brief on that. We started with 73 uh, people who signed up for remote a week before school started. Uh, after communicating with all of the uh, of those students and uh, parents, uh, that number uh, dropped down to 43, 46 with, uh, when we did start school. As we continued on, we continued to uh, stay in touch with counselors, case managers, uh, teachers, uh, people who were 
they when they were zooming in and their uh, our all of our staff and our our secretaries <coughs> I can't think our secretary it's enough for the, all their hard work reaching out to families taking calls because it was very intensive communication over the phone through the email and then also through zoom we had several zoom meetings with families and parents and kids trying to get them back to school uh, and it's not necessarily uh, some of them had legitimate health concerns uh, but some of them we just wanted to continue to be able to offer that they can return at any time and also to meet their needs uh, through technology as we go forward at nine weeks we were down to 20 21 and then uh, about a month before the uh, semester was over we were down to about 19 so when we started this semester we were at 14 and currently we we're at 13 because we had somebody decide to come back to on-site learning even though there some of them still continue to have health concerns but as the numbers show it is health uh, still a lot safer at school because some of them even at home were quarantined due to uh, getting infected so it's been a very journey open eyes but a lot of work and uh, to go that went into that so and then they do pre uh, they do testing after school on Thursday once all the students are out at 3:30. They come in and test in the cafeteria, and we've got some great teachers, uh, Kelly Ackerman, uh, Lisa Renz, uh, Linda Mayer that comes in, uh, and Mr. Lynn uh, helps facilitate that as far as uh, testing after school for our PCR. And we're getting ready to, when we do our state assessments, we'll also continue to provide that for them as well. Any questions? Ooh, a lot of information there, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Any questions or comments, folks? Thank you very much. We're going to set up 140 kids to test for the ACT and Gym A and Gym B. So if you guys want to come up and set up tables and chairs, we need some extra help. Let me know. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I, I wish I had this opportunity when I was in Because I took the ACT and did okay, but I would have done much better if I had this kind of preparation. It's been wonderful. Okay, I'd like to introduce our AD, uh, Lance Prattler. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Winter, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to talk about our sports and activities. Uh, before I begin, first of all, I want to give a, a shout out for, to uh, my three colleagues uh, who I work with. Uh, uh, Fred, John, and Marty. Uh, it's a great team, and, and uh, we, I, I think uh, I couldn't ask for a better team to work, uh, to work with at the high school. And I also want to give a shout out to my assistant, uh, Angie Granger. She's the, she's the true athletic director out there. If without her, uh, it'd be very hard to get things going. So I just wanted to acknowledge those folks. Um, I'm going to talk about three things. I'm going to talk about um, the current status of our sports and some of our accomplishments and then I'm going to talk about facilities and equipment and where we're at and then finally I'm going to talk about what our COVID-19 uh, what we've implemented as far as policies and uh, um, mitigation uh, things that we've uh, put in to help uh, keep our kids and our staff safe. Um, out at Hayes High School we have 52 total sports clubs and activities. Out of those 52, 17, only 17 are sports. So the other 35 are clubs and activities. So when a lot of times when I get up here and when um, <clears throat> I'm talking on the radio or, or for the newspaper, you know, a lot of, it, a lot of the focus is at, on, at, on sports. But we do have a lot of activities and clubs and organizations for our students to become involved with. We feel as if there's something for everybody. There's something, if, if they have an interest, there's something there. And if there isn't, we allow, them, we allow our students the opportunity to create an organization. If they are able to find a sponsor who is on staff, who is uh, interested in supporting and sponsoring that activity, and they put together a plan, and they and their plan shows sustainability and enough interest and it passes muster between uh, myself and Mr. Straub then off they go and they are able to start their own club and activity and we've added a few uh, these past few years um, out of out of our sports clubs and activities 
just giving you some recent numbers, um, on average, we, av we average about 650 athletic uh, participants a year. And considering, you know, our, our enrollment is between, you know, is around 800, between 800 and 850, that's quite a, that, that's quite a percentage of our student body that does uh, become involved. Now, you know, obviously a number of those are multi multiple sport athletes and so on and so forth, but nevertheless, the participation is, is a very good percentage. Um, 200, between 200 and 220 of those of our students are uh, participating in band or music, in the band or music arts. So that is, again, that is another very high percentage of uh, students that are involved in the fine arts. Um, 100 of those students are involved in debate, forensics, and Scholars Bowl, which, is, which those three are Acacia-sponsored competitive activities. So if you take a look at just those activities alone, we have over 950, on average, yearly participants in all of those sports and activities and clubs. So our kids are not sitting idle. They are finding something that interests them and we believe that those opportunities allow them to, to find interests that either become lifelong hobbies or keeps them in shape, keeps them healthy, or possibly leads them to a, to a career uh, that, uh, uh, that, that allows them to make a living. Um, for the past three years, uh, we have had, talking sports-wise, we have had five regional championships on our teams, uh, cross country, golf, and basketball. We have had uh, four state qualifiers in swim, both boys and girls. Uh, in wrestling, we have had 10 state qualifiers in the uh, past two years. Uh, track, we've had six state qualifiers. We've had multiple state placers, more than we can, more than we can count right now in uh, golf, track, wrestling, and basketball at the state level. So we have, we, we are, we have had, and we are continuing to have on a state level a lot of support, or excuse me, a lot of success uh, for Hayes High School, and they represent our community and our school uh, very well. <clears throat> Uh, we have won four WAT championships in the past two and a half years, two in golf, one in baseball, and one in basketball. And we uh, expect to win quite a few more as we move forward. We have a great staff of coaches, both old and uh, who have come on in the past couple years. Very enthusiastic, very dedicated. Get the kids into the weight room, keep them healthy, keep them on the straight and narrow as far as uh, behavior and making sure they're doing the right thing and academics also. On the, on the activities side, uh, starting with our Acacia sponsored activities, uh, debate, we have had two state qualifying teams in the past couple of years. Uh, unfortunately, this year, our uh, state debate team was unable to participate <coughs> in the state tournament due to COVID quarantine uh, complications. Uh, forensics, uh, from 2016 to 2019, we have had 39 state qualifiers in the different disciplines uh, involved in forensics. And in Scholars Bowl, we have had, out of the past four years, we have had two state qualifying teams. So just those numbers alone right there show, you know, indicate that we are having a lot of success and we continue to have a lot of success in the uh, in the sports and activities part of, uh, uh, of Hayes High School. Um, moving along, um, facilities and equ equipment updates. Uh, sports is a, is, is a high maintenance um, part, of, uh, part of high school and, and middle school. Uh, just to name a few things that we have budgeted for, we worked hard for, <coughs> um, received donations for, uh, things that we felt that, you know, sustain and also keep our, uh, keep our kids interested in coming out for sports. Um, we've, we put in new volleyball system, we put in a new volleyball system in our gym A last summer. So if you're out there, if you've been out there, you'll notice that the old 
black uh, systems that were there were replaced by some brand new uh, systems that were put in by AFCO uh, and then uh, a subcontractor by the name of Porter. So they, they're all automated. They're able to drop down and, and move up on the base, based on a flip of a switch and their, um, their competition level uh, at, you know, at the highest degree. We plan on adding another uh, pull system competition set, uh, set that will run lengthwise of gym A, so we'll uh, be able to meet the minimum um, uh, attendance standards for us to be able to uh, hold, uh, host a sub-state uh, volleyball match, and we'll be able to pull out both, uh, both uh, sets of bleachers so we can get some more people in there and then we'll be able to have a nice, big, uh, collegiate-sized uh, volleyball court for our kids to be able uh, to, compete, uh, to compete on. Um, we will also, we're also taking a look at putting a new system, a drop-down system in Gym B that will allow for a very nice competition system in there for the varsity and junior varsity tournaments that we host. Um, we, we've uh, purchased a new tennis serving machine for our tennis, uh, tennis teams. Uh, we've uh, installed new lockers in what is considered the wrestling locker room. Uh, that was between about twenty-five to thirty-some thousand dollars, all said and done, and they look awesome, and our kids uh, really appreciate it. Uh, after the after uh, finishing up the purchase of the wrestling mat that we're going to receive after state wrestling this year, we will have purchased two new wrestling mats. Um, uh, for the weight room, we've, ad we've added two additional racks for a total of 10 racks, which allows not only our athletes to uh, have more racks to participate and work out on, but it also helps our students in the classes also. We don't have so many waiting around for, uh, uh, to do repetitions. There's two more racks for them to work on. Uh, one thing that we put into place a couple of years ago was a uniform rotation uh, schedule, whereby Uniform purchase was a bit arbitrary and kind of depended on, on whether or not that uh, coach uh, was able to fundraise enough and uh, <coughs> enough donations to be able to, uh, uh, to come up with uniforms. We now have a system whereby we have budgeted yearly a certain amount uh, for uniforms and, and, we choose, and there's been certain sports that have put on a rotation schedule on a yearly basis based on previous uh, years uh, purchases and how long the duration has been since then. Um, we are looking at upgrading our trophy cases. Uh, this is a good thing. We just have more Acacia trophies to add to them and we're running out of space. So we're taking a look at providing more room uh, to add more shelving <clears throat> and to update those along with the lighting inside of those so they look a little bit more presentable and allow us to add more trophies that we are sure to, uh, uh, sure to be awarded. Um, we're also taking a look at some point in the future considering a Hayes High School Hall of Fame area, wall, trophy case, some kind of a, a, a setup or a, or a touch screen kiosk of some type is also a consideration. That includes career, academic, and sports and activities related influential Hayes High School alumni. We want to be able to have people come into our building and know what, uh, what politician graduated from, uh, from Hayes High, or what notable teacher or uh, influential person uh, in, including sports and so on. So we're looking forward to uh, taking a look at that. I would be remiss if I didn't sp uh, speak briefly on facility needs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but, one th but a couple of things I do want to bring to your attention that uh, in the very near future, we're going to need to take a very hard look at our tennis courts. Uh, we have some surface cracking that is taking place, and it's going to be very difficult to to host events and have our kids practice on um, some tennis courts that are going to be uh, that have difficult surfaces to play on. Um, our gym floor, there are some there are some areas whereby, uh, through no fault of anybody, just basically age and and uh, atmospheric issues, they're starting to become hollow spots where the floor is starting to heave a little bit and there's dead spots. Basically, when you bounce a basketball on it, it doesn't bounce up. So some things that we'll, we're gonna need to take a look there. Um, 
need to take a look at overall, and I can mention practice football fields and soccer fields and turf fields and all of that, but that is a, that is a board meeting all in itself. But what I do want to bring to people's attention is that we have school districts around us, including school districts in our own, in our own uh, conference that have uh, facilities that are far beyond what we have here in Hayes. And I, I'm not saying that to, to be condescending. I'm just saying that as a matter of fact. If you take a look at 3A districts that, who are building um, unbelievable five-star facilities, and I was just at one in Scottsdale, a 3A district school of, in a town of 2,500 has an unbelievable facility for, uh, uh, for basketball and indoor sports. <clears throat> Colby, Kansas, uh, and I was part on this board, uh, this planning committee. They are in the process of building over, I think it's over a $15 million indoor facility for their high school <clears throat> and, their, uh, and their junior college. Um, you know, we have Dodge City as an indoor practice football, soccer, uh, band facility, indoor and then a couple of outdoor, all-weather surface um, playing fields and practice fields. The, those, those are the norm for these districts now. Many 3A schools, 4A schools, I have friends, Abilene has just put in something uh, in, in regards to a, a turf football field, Rossville, a 3A school. These are things that I think as we move forward and as we look at making improvements in our district, we need to take a hard look at those facility at improving those facilities also. I understand it's all about money, but as somebody said when I was on the planning council for the facility that's going up in Colby, is that every year you can make that argument. It's always going to be about money regardless of how prosperous the times are. So we need to keep keep those at the forefront of our thinking as we move ahead. It's an investment in your community. It's not just an investment in your schools. So as, if you build it, they will stay and they will come. And I, and I, I, have, I know of facts and proof behind those types of things. Um, COVID-19, and I will be brief about this uh, so we can move on. Um, obviously, there's been protocols that have uh, been suggested by, this, uh, by the CASHA and by the CDC. We have worked very hard uh, to be able to put those into place. Just for winter sports, we have put in a seating chart out, at, uh, out for our gyms, uh, mainly for basketball attendance, uh, uh, because those uh, attract the larger crowds. We, the Acacia recommendation per participant has been four spectators, but due to our gym size, we aren't able to uh, adhere to that, uh, to that spectator amount. So for basketball, we had to put it at f uh, three per participant. And for band, cheer, and dance, who also participate in those uh, contests, we had to go with two and still allow for our students to be able to have tickets uh, to be able to enter the game. So all in all, our total uh, amount of folks that are able to come into our just gym A is 388 total home fans, approximately 493 total fans if you add the visitor side of that. Now granted, our, um, our gym total capacity is 13, is uh, 1,384. So you can, you can see that that's quite, a, that's quite a, a, a drop in numbers that are able to actually uh, attend our, uh, <clears throat> attend our um, events. Uh, traveling on buses, uh, spacing is practice as much as possible. We try to keep one student to per seat, and then we take more buses if need be to be able to socially distance. They're required to wear masks. Uh, our coaches are required to keep seating charts, so in case there is a positive case, we're able to do uh, some diligent contact tracing. So uh, I'm, there's obviously a lot more we could talk about, but I'm going to cut it right there and uh, entertain any questions. questions real quick. Uh, yeah. Uniform rotation, that include the band or is that just sports? It, no, that does not include the band, but uh, uh, that now that you've mentioned that, we are in the process of taking a look at uh, purchasing band uniforms. Uh, 
Mr. Straub is a little bit more in tune with that in regards to more information, but uh, in a sense, yes, it's kind of been stuck into the current uniform okay. rotation. We average about three to four teams uh, every year getting new uniforms of some type. So, um, thank you for all that information. I, I'm curious, is there a way that's feasible to be able to um, coordinate with either the Chamber of Commerce or the Grow Hayes Economic Development to be able to find out the potential loss of economic impact to our community for those various events that we cannot host here in our schools based on our facilities. And I'm not referring to just sporting events, but I know you and I have talked about how it was either Stuco, I think it was Stuco Regional Group that was not able to come here based on our auditorium. Mm -hmm. And so is there a way that we can start recording that lost potential very yeah very much um, and I would say you would also probably would like to throw in the Hayes Rec Department in there too um, I know in visiting with Roger Bixman um, and, and this is just one case in point and I'm sure there's others too and, and this was more of a weather related situation but uh, and, and I don't know the complete history but we used to Apparently, we hold a, a large annual softball tournament, uh, high school level, uh, that brings multiple teams. Um, one, but unfortunately, one year it was it was rained out, and it was just one of those days or one of those weekends where I think you had off and on rainstorms. That, and I'll just put it out there: if you had an all weather field situation, you know. In between the rainstorms, you could have been able to play. Um, consequently, when they went back to try and get that uh, tournament rescheduled, many of the teams that had been originally scheduled dropped out because they didn't want to take the chance of being rained out. So they found other tournaments that had all weather fields to be able to play. And I mean, sports is one of the Sports and activities are one of the, you know, better avenues to bring, you know, money to to the area. And we're talking outside money. It's just not just recirculated currency in your own community. It's people it's bringing also, it outside money. And it keeps our community here versus going to another community. Exactly, going to some some other tournament um, that we could probably uh, host here. I think that would be something that would be extremely um, useful for future conversations just because that's not just about impact to students, which we are obviously here for that, but it also would be able to show just the, the wide vast of, of impact that the USD 489 has on this economy. So, thank you. I just wanted to thank you and Hayes High School, the cooperation between the middle school and the high school because of the lack of facilities at our middle school level also over the years that's been tremendous whether it's locker rooms or tournaments or the track, it's just been a positive. Yeah, I, I can't thank Bruce enough for us being able to cooperate facility-wise. Uh, he's great to work with. Lance, um, what is the uh, process that you use to make sure that we are meeting all the provisions for Title IX? And I noticed you've got a softball field up there. Can you kind of tell us what you're looking at there? Well, that is a, you know, um, I don't want to say it's a sticky s subject, but when, if we, as we move forward and talk about facilities, it, it's going to be very difficult to talk about putting in a, I'll just, you know, throw something out there, a turf football field or a turf soccer field without talking about softball first. Um, because we have such a fantastic baseball field, the, the, uh, the scales are a little bit tipped in, in that regard to a very, you know, to a similar sport being softball not having their own facility. We still have to use Glassman 
for their facility. And there's there have been you know there's been buildings put out there as far as a hitting barn and, and things that are supposed to cater towards our softball team, but it's still technically it's not our facility. So you know that is one thing that Mr. Straub and I have talked about. That is that that is our next focus is coming up some way. You know whether it's working cooperative cooperatively with the rec or the city or building our own uh, coming up with the softball field so as far as title nine goes everything else is very balanced we what you know you it, the, the rule is if you offer one sport for the gentleman you have to offer you also have to have another opportunity for uh, for the ladies too so um, and, and we're we're fine in that regard and I also feel that now with the uniform rotation, you know, it's, it's, it's about two girls sports to two boys sports that get uh, uniforms every year. Um, I, I couldn't tell you as far as equipment purchases right now whether or not that's very balanced, but things like tennis, you know, you buy a piece of equipment, it's good for the girls and the boys. So uh, Title IX, I feel like we're very equitable, um, but the one subject that does keep coming up is the softball field. Also, the safety with them having to drive after school and not be right there on site. That the that is yeah. yes. And younger, older classmen taking younger classmen. Right. That yes. that is an issue. Yes. So well, I'm glad you're looking at it. And that facility be phased in. I mean, like I know we have it on our list, but it's like one big chunk of half a million or something. Um, well, you know, here's the here's the thing is. It, it depends on the direction you want to go, and I, I visited about this with uh, Mr. Wilson, and I, I, have, I have had a company come out and take a look at a bundled type package of taking a look at getting started, uh, well, let, let's put it this way, building a, 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 I don't want to say state of the art, but I mean a very modern softball field with a turf infield all the way to a completely turfed field it's a 200 foot fence for softball so it's not you know so uh, in material intensive but you get you have your softball field that that is without your restrooms and things like that but if you're just talking playing surface and bleachers and what this company would be able to help you know design and build a bundle package of a softball field along with the turf football field with with uh, basic um, uh, uh, bleacher systems being put in to at least get to a point to where you could have a, a, a decent spectator sport uh, event. So um, it, you can just do a softball field by itself, but it's, it's kind of like if you want to be co cost effective and you want to be able to bundle your materials and, you know, we're, we're, we're go big or go home type of mentality, that is something that I have shared with uh, uh, with the administrators at Hayes High School and Mr. Wilson. Are we able to host a state regional uh, for, for softball? Like, for softball? Uh, if we if we meet the minimum uh, attendance seating requirements, we can. Yes, and I don't know off the top of my head what the what that would be. It, I think it's between two and four hundred spectators. We would be able to do that. Glassman, I, I don't know. I mean, it, I think it does work because I know we've hosted in the past, but uh, you know, I don't know if something was brought in just for that. You know, if they, they moved the bleachers. Yeah. Thank you for your information. I appreciate all your work. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Hope Kisner and Emma Morley, they're Stuco representatives of Hayes High School. They're going to present next. Hello. So we are just going to go over some of the things that Stuco has done and how we've adapted to all of the changes with COVID-19. Um, one of the first things we did this fall was homecoming, and we had our dance outside with masks on, and it went really well the students really enjoyed it um, the next thing we did recently was the talent show and we had a little studio studio audience in the lecture hall 
and we taped it and then had it on the Hayes High website for the whole school. That also went very well. This past weekend, we had our Indian call, but we couldn't have a dance because we didn't want to have it outside and we could not have it indoors. So we did a candidate showcase for the public and that was down on Main Street where all the candidates stood in um, Regina's flowers and try off the central supplies. And that also went very well and we had a lot of our student body come out. So this year for Stuka, one of our one of our main focuses was bringing students together. Obviously, there's been a lot of setbacks through last spring and the beginning of this school year. So our main goal was really just to encourage students to be active in their school life because we can't really have big events. So obviously, we want to bring people as, together as much as we can while they're in school. So as much as our events have been limited, we have really just been encouraging students to appreciate the fact that we are in school. Obviously, there's a lot of schools in Kansas who aren't even in school and they even struggle with hybrid classes. So we really focused on being appreciative of what we have instead of what we don't have. Any questions for us? Well, it sounds like you've been doing everything you can to continue on even though it's COVID and uh, we do the Indian call, but it's too cold outside. Yes. Very great. Yes. Thank you. And you, you can't answer this question probably, maybe you can. But I know there's research out there somewhere that indicates that kids that are involved in stuco or athletics or band or art, or, uh, their academics are also high too. So that sounds about right from what you've heard? Yeah. Yes. So what uh, economic benefits do these things standing, but also helps academically? Yeah. yeah. Next up, we have Mr. and Mrs. Lohmeyer. Before you, before you sit down, I want to, I want to just comment on. I, I've met maybe a half dozen times with the executive officers for Stuka, or at least uh, Emmy and Hope are two of those officers. Their attitude and just problem solving ability, just you know, sometimes the answer has to be no. If I have good reason to say no, they understand that. But it's not one time a student away and then come up with a better idea than what we would have. So I just, I, I praise those guys because it would be very easy to just become disgruntled and disappointed with every turn of the corner. Um, but they become very, very creative and strong problem solvers. And uh, for example, tonight, um, they are here because the present vice president couldn't be here. And, and I told those girls, we'll find some other officers to show up. And that's what, but that's what leadership is. You know, so stepping up and you need to, just girls, I'll tell you to your face, but I've said it to you guys before, your attitudes have been great, and that's why we're having a great school. So thank you, Stuco, for your leadership. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies, I would like to mention the uh, event downtown involving the community with the unique call it was very nice, and I think it's well received by all the parents and all the Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Hi, um, we are Joe and Misty Lemeyer, and we are the president, vice president of the site council for Hayes High. And um, you were asking how often we meet. We meet every month during the school year, except in December. And basically, it's their site council is wonderful. They have reps from all over academics, athletics, um, different organizations. There's always a student representative, different parents. Um, we even have um, a representative from Fort Hayes State come in and talk to us. And basically, everyone just gives a brief summary of what is going on and, in their organization. And we all, it's, it's been eye-opening for me, and as you can hear about um, all the things that go on at Hayes High, because we have two daughters, one that just graduated from Hayes High this past year and a sophomore. And, we know what they're involved in, but if we have no idea how much is really out there, and it's been eye-opening, and it's amazing what all goes on. Um, so we've been very grateful, and then we are able to all go back to our organizations and share what we've learned. Um, they also wanted us to talk about, like, as a parent of Hayes High, um, I am amazed at all the variety of courses, and you could, you've heard the administration talk about it. Um, I grew up in a small town, so that was, totally different to me, but I am so blessed that our girls were able to 
have all of those opportunities and all the organizations it doesn't matter what your personality is what your interest is you can find your niche at pays high i mean there's something for everybody and i feel like there's nobody that needs to be an outcast or anything it doesn't it's not it's just something for everyone and we're very grateful for that um, they also do a great job of preparing the students for after high school you know and even when they're in college our college age girl they're still helping the counselor still in touch with her and that's just been really nice to see um, they do also a great job of helping the kids decide what path do they want to take and they work really hard with them to help them figure that out they have a, they have a, a program is it Jello? That's not it. That's not it. Zello. 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 I've only saw it one time. I knew it wasn't Jello. Uh, and that, that, again, kind of coming from a small town, to, to be able to put your kids on a path and see that they have they have different testing and different plans that they can put these kids on, that they can understand what they're going to be, what they're going to thrive at in life. And I, we didn't have that. It's like, you want to weld? They go on in class. You want to, you know. There's, there's a lot more opportunities right now and, and, and opportunities for them to discover something that they can do with the rest of their life that they might not even know exists right now, but this can lead them down that path. I think that's, I think that's a fascinating program, and uh, it's, it's exciting to, to have your children going through it. So. Uh, in regards to uh, COVID-19, uh, for us, it's, it's always, you know, it's, it's an interesting time for a parent to be raising a child, uh, having COVID-19 being a factor. I think we've all, I think Hayes High, I know Hayes High's done an excellent job of, of, of keeping our parents, the, the parents informed as they go through the process of what they're trying to do, uh, you know, with, that, with athletics. Uh, we get uh, good uh, emails informing us how many parents can be there. This is how you sign up if you're interested, if you're going out of town. These are the parents that, or these are, this is the protocol. Can you, can you not go to that one? If not, here's a YouTube link, or here's, you know, what, what can you can do? So I think they've done a good job of balancing that out uh, and keeping us informed. Um, uh, let's see, uh, basically, and then also with the site council, the other thing I wanted to talk about with site council, we've done a good job, I think Marty's done a good job of that with, with the COVID-19, uh, keeping us, Having the option to do it via Zoom or via in, you know in person, kind of by whatever somebody feels comfortable with. So, and you know you can't. I feel like there's a variety of parents, and I'm sure it's not with just schools. It's with every organization and everything right now that there. Some of them think that you're not doing enough to keep them safe, and some think that you're being overwhelmingly and you know smothering them a little bit and doing too much. But honestly, I really feel like they've got a great balance of trying to keep our kids as safe as they possibly can but at the same time giving them that opportunity to be in high school because this is their one and only chance that they get that and i feel like they're doing everything in their power to do what they can for these kids and to make it as normal as possible during this time so we're very appreciative of this school does anyone have questions for us i'm not sure we can answer them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the information. Yeah, next up, Mr. Stroud. So. Our, our thing for this year at Hayes High School is appreciation. And I don't know if you, you heard that word, and we used it at least two, if not three times. But I think we all learned, uh, principals and counselors and our, our food service staff, our janitors, how, how empty the shell is without kids being there. And um, we, it's a people business. And in the end, we want them to be successful and graduate. And along the way, it's, it's really about getting to know the kids and, and, and the staff and building those relationships so that they can come back and, and communicate with us and we can communicate with them and check on how they're going. But our theme this year is appreciation because of last spring. We really don't know, and there's a sign right outside the counselor's office, you really don't know what you appreciate until it's gone. And we learned that real quick last spring. We found it down. Um, I also feel like this year has been a year of perseverance. And without the trust and support of uh, the students, number one, their families, number two, and you guys in central office, number three, for us to go forward and really just say, you know, I know our numbers going up, but just just being confident we can, we can do this, you know, and, and just have a having a 
we can do this attitude uh, has what has gotten us through. Um, I sent a kind of a pep talk email if any of you are parents. Tammy, you probably got one. Alan, you probably got one. I know my assistants all got one today from our parents because we've had some incidents recently and we haven't done a great job. And it puts every student at risk uh, to having to step away from school. So if, if we work together, we can continue to have a success second semester. I, I fully believe that. But if we start getting lackadaisical in some of our, our protocols, then we put our kids at risk to not finish the school year. And doggone it, we want to do everything we possibly can to do that. And we will continue to do that. From a parent's perspective, COVID, I better look this way. COVID, um, somebody asked me, he said, are you guys going to require kids to wear masks when you go back to school? This was in the summer. You think you can do that? I said, I don't think we'll be able to get them to do it. I just don't. Why not? It's a big deal. You know, there's so many different beliefs in the homes and communities and politics get into play. And I don't want to be fighting kids every day of the week. So I don't know. We may have it. And by golly, the district committed to it. We communicated it at every level, K through 12. And there are times where we have to tell a kid, get your mask on. Um, get your mask on. You know, we will continue to make that effort because it's worth it. But it's not all about masks. It's about the many other protocols that we do in each and one of each and every one of our schools, K-12, that has allowed us to stay there. These girls know it. If without their support of masks, we wouldn't have masks. But if without that support, we wouldn't be in school. So it's really a good exercise in democracy. It's not a, a, a dictatorship. It's we want you to have these privileges and rights, but we have to have your cooperation. And it's a social contract. The social contract says we're going to give up some of these rights so we can have very important rights protected. And I really believe, uh, being an old social studies guy, I really believe in that. I think that's what our society is based on. I'm very proud of our kids and our staff and how they, how they handle that. Going forward, we continue. We will continue to do our very best. So I'm uh, very proud. I've always believed the most important thing that we do as administrators is hire the best people we can and keep them here as long as we can. And when that time is up, we go on and we find the next best person. And we keep that next best person. And as long as we can continue to hire good people like Ray with Hayes High, the, the future is bright for Hayes High and its students. Um, I'm going to show you our first semester number. This, sh this shows a daily amount of quarantines and positives. There was one time we did reach the 1% threshold with regard to the gating um, criteria that you as a board supported. <laughs> And that email did go out. And every week when I clean up my email on the weekend to try to get to a manageable number, I put my 1% email back at the top for the week. Because I, at a moment's notice, I may need to send that out again. But thank goodness we've only had to do that once. We hope to not get to one and a half. We hope to not get to one. If we get to two, that's more serious. But we, um, you can see, now please keep in mind, if you look at, and that's a little blurry up here, but notice the scale on the left side because i want you to think about we got pretty high up in the mid 80s we had at one time uh, that number of students 10 percent of our student body was going to at one time but then with all the data that the entire district collected and work with the, the ellis county health department we were able to say really data suggests that we probably shouldn't send a home for 14 it should be seven that helps so much folks that helps so very much um, to keep more kids in school and still healthy. So uh, we did that, we're very happy with that. That's first semester. If you want me to take me to second semester, you can see last week was a kind of a tough week. This is the beginning of the semester to today, actually. Um, it was a tough week. That's a good example of how one, one situation can affect 20 kids like, like you wouldn't believe. Um, we're feeling very confident and in our, in our weekly meeting this morning I said, you know, we've got to be careful about getting comfortable. We don't want to ride people hard, but we have to remind ourselves that protocol is there for good reasons. And we need to support that. We need to remind our staff because we can't be all places. But we remind, have to remind ourselves too. We can't become complacent as administrators. And the kids, we can't let them become complacent. Because sure enough, we were setting at um, maybe five and only two, five quarantine, two, two positive, and we shot up to 37 in a matter of three or four days. That's how fast it can happen. So 
Um, no one talked numbers with you, but I'm telling you, we're very proud of our numbers. Uh, we're very proud that we're a school district that allows kids to come to school every day and receive face-to-face -face instruction. We know we know that's very, very important for kids. And we want to thank you guys for, for trusting us enough. And I'm sure you get calls. And, and I'm glad you get calls. But And it's probably a, it burdensome sometimes and, and makes you nervous. It makes us nervous too. But we do know that if we base, base our decisions on good numbers, accurate data, and a plan together, we think we can be in school the rest of the school year. And we do have a plan A. I got a call about graduation today. We do have a plan A and a plan B. Our plan A is as normal graduation as possible um, at Gross, if Fort Hayes State will have us. But we have a plan B with some people on the call with reserves. We had a nice, that was a beautiful uh, ceremony last summer. If we have to, we'll do something like that. We've got people on reserve with no down payment, which is kind of nice. But we hope to be back at Fort Hayes so these kids can have a little normalcy and finish up their career. So, um, parents have been wonderful guys. Parents have been parents have been easy to work with, especially when we went from 14 to 7. I have to get that to It made it a whole lot easier to make those calls. So, I'm, we didn't intend to take so much time, but I'm glad you let us. And we could talk for hours about our school because we're very proud of it. And but thank you guys for your support and thank you for your service as well. Oh, your your uh, your desire to do good things and help kids it comes out when you're talking. So we appreciate that you came here. And I know all the things you have done, you talked about right there, has been stressful and more work for all the administrators and all the teachers and all the kids. So. I know it's been a stressful year, and I love your appreciative, and we appreciate what you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Chris. Appreciate it. Hey, Marty, can you tell yes, everybody and all the board and people watching you, what is the date for graduation? Great. The date for graduation is Sunday, May 23rd. It's on the calendar um, at 1.30. We plan to be at Gross Memorial, but again, um, we may not be at Gross Memorial, and we, when we know, you will know right now. Uh, that, that's what you should put on your invitations with updates to follow. <laughs> we're, we're very optimistic that we can do that for the kids. And, um, it's a nice big facility. We could should be able to social distance if we have to at that time, Alan. So um, we got a call today. It was kind of interesting. They said, um, is it really true that every graduate only gets one guest to graduation? It was like we saw it on your calendar. It's like, mm. So we were trying to figure out where this came from. We found that we said, please send us that screenshot. And we still are kind of looking. The shirt kind of says that, but not really. But we, have, you know, the internet is a funny thing. People are taking information off our data all the time and putting it on their on their site. So it's the best place to look is HaysHighEngines.com or USB49.com. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I would like to say it is an honor to be a part of this. It really takes everybody, but if we communicate and tell the truth, I always I say this to side council all the time. They are the best sounding board that I have because if we don't share as much truth as quickly as we can, as accurately as we can, the people should reasonably expect to know people will make the truth up for you. That's been a hard lesson over the last five years with different weird stuff that's happened in our own community. But um, we just we say that a lot. And if I can tell these folks things that aren't confidential, they go out and share the accurate information. It's just better for you guys too because people get the truth because they you got it from the site council member. We have a very active site council. We have about half. What uh, this last month we've done a little bit, probably 15, 18 throughout the week. The month before we had about 26 on, about 12, uh, 12 in in house, face to face, another 14 in there. So it's we've all we've all learned a little bit. You know, they don't have to be there to be part of site council. So I, I think that number should grow in the future too. Thank you. 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 Well, on this uh, time of year, we have Vicki Vale, who served with USB 49 for five years as principal. Janice Burkholder, 41 years. 
of service, a teacher at Roosevelt, and Don Keel, teacher 32 years, Roosevelt Elementary as well. And I'll pull those out there before we do reports. So, hi, Don. You know, New Year, so I can just announce. Yeah, let's start the wall. Okay. We have this all right. We're going to set the table here. Yep. Yes, Good yes. evening. And as you can probably tell, our name has changed to Adams Brown LLC. Yes. So we are uh, a little different, but everything else has remained the same with a little bit of a different logo. I want to introduce Jamie Benichek. She's going to go over first the evidence letter with you guys. And then I'm Melissa Rogan, and so I'll
7,719 from the beginning of the year to 805,924 at the end of the year. If you go down three line items, which, uh, we're going to land on the fourth one, which is going to be the capital outlay fund. And you'll notice that this fund at the end of the year was at 2.7 million, so we have been down about 410,000. But again, you've had some projects going on, and you were well within your budget of what you were expecting to do. If you go down about another four line items, you're going to get to the food service program. And again, we take a look at this. You started the year at 411,000. If you remember, you didn't collect receipts, but you were down about 32,000. Obviously, when we shut schools down on March 13th through the end of the year, but you did have federal funds that came back to the place that you were able to provide um, meals to the students. And so that increased to 76800 And again, sometimes that fluctuates depending on what you have um, going into half the following year. You also are not supposed to have more than three months of operating cash retained in that fund. So you're well within those requirements also when you look at it from a compliance standpoint. Um, Special education, at the end of June 30, 2019, you had a balance of 40651 At the end of this year, you have 329351 And this right here is your, you know, it's it would be your continuing education that you would use for the co-op. And so again, you had anticipated on having a larger unencumbered cash balance at the end of the year and had worked on that. Um, we're going to jump down kind of to probably the last five or six line items from the bottom of the page. And those you're going to notice have negative unencumbered cash, which is okay because you're, they're your federal funds. So you expend your federal funds first, and then you seek reimbursement. And so that is not any type of statute violation because it is a federal fund, and the statutes allows you to do that. It's also replenished for its made zero then when we start the year of July 1st of 2020. If you go ahead and flip over to page five, if we take a look at the beginning, and cover cash at the beginning of the year was at 7,049,837. Then the end of that cover cash at the end of the year was 7,941,100. Are there any questions on any of those? If not, I'm going to have you go back to page 14. As you read through the pages to page 14, there's some notes to the financial statement, some underlying items that go into the financial statements. If you need good safety material, it should work for the season. On page 14, we have our um, this is the capital leases, and currently the school had four at the beginning of July 1st of 2019. We did pay one off, so you have three remaining. Um, two of them will come off in next fiscal year 2021, and then the following fiscal year 2022. So at the end of the year, you have 2023179 Part of the majority of that, $1.6 million, is that Oak Park purchase. And again, I know you have some funding mechanisms that may um, be tired out a little bit earlier. If there's no questions on that, I want to jump back to page 61. To which page? 61. and 
no non-compliance materials with financial statements. So if you would have had something noted, one of these boxes would have been checked and then it would have been deemed in the how material it would have been. The second part to take a look at is your federal awards. And underneath that, we do the same thing. We take a look. The federal awards that we did look at this year is a head start at 93.600, which is a catalog of federal domestic assistance. The other one then that we did have to take a look at is what we call the special education cluster. And every so there's a rotation basis. Any federal funds that you have over $750,000 we have to look at every once in three years. So there's always a rotation basis. After we get to the rotation to see what we need to do, then we need to make sure we get enough coverage. So because you do your financial statements on regulatory basis of accounting, we do have to observe at least 40% of your federal expenditures. And so these two um, programs, what we call your major programs for the year. And we have no material weaknesses, nor significant deficiencies. And again, you have an unmodified opinion, which means it's a clean opinion. We talk about the dollar threshold distinguished between, between type A, type B programs, and that's the 750,000. You would not qualify as a low risk entity for the fact that you do not do regulatory, because you do do regulatory basis of accounting, and so it's a 40% criteria that we have to select in those all expenditures. And again, most school, most school districts, most entities in Kansas do not do, usually provide a general accepted accounting principles report because of the, it is a very expensive report to maintain and to also issue. I want you to go to page 62. We talk about financial statement findings or federal awards and findings. I will notice this says that. We did have a few items that the district had taken a look at to did a um, correct action plan on last year, and those will be uh, uh, detailed out for your reading on pages 63 through 66. If we take a look at page 68, this is your total overall federal awards. And when you take a look at your federal awards from June 30th of 2019 through June 30th of 2020, you'll notice that this year you had expended $6,514,352. A year ago, you had expended about $5.8 So this year, you were able to receive federal awards of about $717,000 more than you fully expended during the year. Page 69. Areas that we need to uh, work on, and I see a few like on page 16. Those you took care of last year. Oh, that's good. So yeah. those were done. You didn't have any to work on this year. Okay. Wow. Good. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. And, and, it, and everyone. I know that Jamie had alluded to it before. You did. You did. You thought. You know. You have new staff in place a year ago. Okay. We still have some new. I know, so they've got a whole year underneath their belts. And so they were able to take our recommendations, they incorporated them. And so we do thank them for doing that. It is it is nice when they're able to do that degree and clean up in one year. Yes. Any questions, folks? So when you guys get your revenue that comes into the school district, you get local revenue, which is usually your dollars from real estate taxes that we collect and get passed through. Maybe there are fees that the students and their parents are paying. You get a component of state aid, and so that comes to the state of Kansas. And then you get federal awards or federal revenue that comes through. And so if you're getting federal revenue, that comes through, then those are termed what we call federal expenditures. And so federal expenditures, anything over 750000 has to be detailed out from the federal government, and they want to see how you expend it. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions, folks? Oh, I just have to make a general observation. 
observation that sure. this is the for us new people just elected a year ago this is our second time we get to hear and of course a year ago it was pretty overwhelming and i remember being a lot more not confused well i'm always confused but <laughs> um but more i guess i felt like there was some maybe some more concern so i do think it should be noted publicly um thank you for your your team doing the work but thanks to the financial uh, side of our operations um this is this needs to be noted and celebrated so thank you it's in the record now it's in the record opinion okay. well again thank you for everything we really do appreciate it the whole entire office team does thank you thank you Uh, Ron, we'll <coughs> oh, yeah. yes. accept the audit as presented. Second. Move. Move. Uh, motion and a second. Very good. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Okay. Call for a vote. All in favor of accepting the uh, audit as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay, motion passes 7 to 0. Please vote electronically the same one. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on. Thanks for reminding me. Okay, Ron. Okay, I'll be uh, brief on my communication this evening so we can uh, go to your hair. Okay. Uh, Vaccine, uh, we have started the uh, vaccine of staff. Uh, as, and uh, of course, we started with our older uh, staff members. Um, and we're hoping to continue that. Uh, we are signing up, uh, getting all of our staff members that are wanting the vaccine. We're uh, getting them signed up and getting them prepared once that we uh, get that call. Um, we're just kind of Kind of on the number of vaccines that Ellis County gets, you know, either weekly or bi-weekly or however it, it just comes, and we don't always know. Uh, but we are fully prepared that when uh, when those vaccines arrive, we'll continue to uh, get uh, our employees vaccinated. And, uh, we're very hopeful that uh, that will be sooner than later. So. Question on that. Um, yes. That's all voluntary vaccines? Or yes, required? all voluntary. No one is required to uh, get the vaccine. We encourage you, we would like to encourage our staff members to do it, but we will not require to get the vaccine. We haven't had a chance to talk today, but I think there were a handful of folks who got notified today. So, yeah, awesome. so the, the, the next round, anyway, and it'll, it'll trickle for a long, long time, so it's hard to say the next round, but we had people that got contacted, I believe, today that would be. The start of the next round, of course. Did they say yeah. when the next round would? I know they haven't had a vaccination claim for a week or two. Yeah, it's just it's they and we've asked that question and they don't really know either. It's they're kind of just when they get called by their getting vaccine, and uh, so we'll just keep continuing to chip away. I, I assume we're hopeful that that will those numbers will instead of dribbling in, will start to expand and be larger. I, I was just gonna uh, talk a little bit about COVID and I think Mr. Stroud kind of hit on that. We just kept, we're just continuing to, you know, just let people know that, hey, the light is at the end of the tunnel on this, but we still have to follow the protocols. I think that in my correspondence with the board, uh, you have noticed right after Christmas, we were doing great, probably as good as we've been, but uh, we have suddenly started to see a little bit of a, an incline and we, we don't want to get back to those first semester numbers uh, so we just encourage everyone to understand that it's still here it's, uh, it's still uh, something that we're dealing with um, but we just need everyone to follow the protocol put in place and stick with it because we're going to get through this so uh, uh, they, they talked a little bit about uh, the guidelines for spectators uh, spring events just uh, you know things that are coming up we're still going to follow protocols 
Okay, there you go. Kindergarten Roundup is one of those spring events that will be slightly altered from uh, what, we're, what we know normally. It's been scheduled for March 1st. Uh, this year, though, it's going to look a little different in that when we bring uh, parents in, we're only bringing in parents who do not have students previously in our, one of our elementaries. You know, so uh, if they have an elementary student, they kind of know the rig you know, the roles of what goes through, and we'll, we'll do correspondence with them, but we won't require them to come in. So we are asking that our, our kidding, new kindergarten parents who do not have a, a, an elementary student in the school to uh, show up on March 1st. That will really limit the number of uh, parents that we can get into that room on that evening, and we'll help uh, get that information. Training. And uh, that, that training will 
and it's going to be very important. We have scheduled that actually for February 15th. Uh, that was part of the calendar change previously where we asked you to uh, you know, make you aware that you were going to uh, take that day off from school and we'll get to do some training for staff. Uh, Fast Bridge well, is, uh, in this, I think in a sense, may not be very exciting for you, I think it's very exciting for our staff. <laughs> and we'll, we'll really provide some great information as we work through this MTSS process. District wide is really going to be, uh, in a sense, a game changer for us. So, Jane, um, you want to add anything? Well, and so certainly we get a star, the Renaissance products, star leaves from Is it 
administered like stars and on the computer individually that they don't have to do it one on one. You said just at the preschool. Yeah. Or yeah. It depends on what age you are. It is adapted and it's computerized for the most part. However, it is um, one on one administered where the teacher inputs data for the students, so it's all collected there. But like, and anyone who's flagged, like with the dyslexia, anyone who's flagged in the upper grades, they need to do an all reading fluency, and that will need to be one on one administered. So it really is a complete package. But for the most part, yes, it's computerized and it's pretty quick. Even the, um, the behavior part, my savers, kids answer some questions about their own behavior, social emotional, and student and teachers can assess uh, students as well. And so that will be good data to look at. Very good, thank you. Okay. And uh, just I want to end uh, just you know as follow up. Uh, it seems like it was uh, eons ago, but uh, we we talked about capital outlay and a lot of our facility needs, and of course they were addressed this evening. Uh, just in some of the presentations, uh, especially in the area of athletic facilities. Um, I have uh, been working with DLR um, and, and saying you know. What, what would next steps be in terms of you know, where, knowing where we've been and where maybe we want our money to go? Uh, they are uh, putting together a perception survey. Uh, we, uh, this survey is just basically something you send out to your community. Uh, and uh, they have uh, sent us a draft question. We've been working through it with the administrators. Uh, and uh, I will be bringing to you uh, the next meeting. Uh, just a, a draft and we'll have some discussion about um, you know if that's something you're interested in sitting out or things you might want to see on there or if not we'll, we'll discuss that. So just want to be, make you aware that uh, that is uh, being worked on and we'll, we'll just uh, do what uh, the board proceeds uh, as the next step. Okay? Great. That's it for me. Okay. On to the uh, RAC business support team update from Chris. So the uh, the exciting stuff about your role and, and our role is talking about the high school and and talking about kindergarten round up and formative assessment and literacy and all of those things. I'm excited to say that the boring part is the audit crowd and we're we're excited about that. I wish I could take uh, more credit, but, but it's a lot of work on the part of all three legs of the stool that I would call our business support team. And, and a lot of that, if you remember, that we're looking at last year's books, because of the way the year ended, is able to be a part of those conversations, but really the, the work that um, Amy, Faye, and Renee, and then that Keith did in cleaning up a lot of those processes last year, uh, they, get, they get the credit for, for that. We are working really hard to become even more boring hopefully uh, in the future going forward. It's good to like more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there, there's work to do, and there's a few things I want to talk about, but, but boy, I sure feel like we're heading in the right direction. Uh, just some of the ongoing processes, things that, that are happening all of the time behind the scenes are just your normal stuff between payrolls and onboarding and offboarding uh, folks as we have and bring in new employees and, and folks decide to leave the district and the, just the the KSDE reports and the, the managing all of the expenditures and the VOs and the bid process, all of those things keep going. And we've joked about, I wonder who's doing those things since all we do is <coughs> uh, which is not true, but I tell you what, it has been a, a, a significant increase um, to the load. The, the steps that we're taking right now with the, the software and looking and, and using the the move to what I would call a way more modern software program, using that as an opportunity to really evaluate the processes that we have in place and evaluate what we want those processes to look like going forward is really where the, the magic is happening. And there's light at the end of the tunnel, but all of those things are happening while we're doing everything we used to do, plus COVID and this. So it's, uh, it's an interesting time right now. Uh, I want to talk about, yeah, the, some of, the, some of the places where we're looking at processes and, and just really trying to develop ways to become uh, more efficient as well as more accurate. And, and in a lot of cases, that means we're taking out a lot of pinpoints in a lot of places where things have been very manually driven. Uh, and, 
and creating things that are a little more automated and a little more uh, fluid. And that ultimately helps us with uh, being efficient and being accurate. One process I want to talk to you about because, it, because it's going to be a change uh, in how we go forward. And it's not a change, again, it's not a change because of the software that we're moving to, but it is, it does provide us with the right time to evaluate the situation and make the change and set things up uh, in a new way as we move forward. And it's 100% and it's around um, efficiency and, and accuracy. The, the process that I'm talking about is for our, what I'm going to call our nine month non-certified staff. So if you think of special education parents, um, classroom aides, ELL classroom aides, um, bus, bus transportation, um, kitchen staff, those are the folks that are non-certified, so it's not the teachers, and, and they're working nine months. Okay, if you go to uh, what our current state is right now. So we first, when, when someone is, is hired, and during onboarding, we create a calendar that says, okay, if you work every day, every minute of every day that you're supposed to work between now and the end of the school year, then you would have this many hours. So now we take that, we divide it by the number of their, their hourly rate, and we say, okay, if you work every minute of every day, you're gonna get <coughs> this much. And so we divide that by 12, okay? Each month then we start with that number, so what that 112 is, but then we also have to manually go back and reconcile were there paid leave, were there unpaid leave, was there a snow day, was there some extra time because we had an in-service and they had to stay a little bit longer. So then we manually reconcile all of those things and then in each case, we use the term dock or extra pay. Well, it's not a dock if you didn't work. Say we didn't, say we, you didn't work that time and you had to take some unpaid leave because you were out of paid sick leave or something like that. Well, it's not a dock, it's really just a recoupment of the extra that we paid you because you were gonna work that many hours, right? So, um, or if we did have extra hours, then we're gonna pay you a little bit extra. So, in that uh, reconciliation, then when we hit June, um, we go ahead and we calculate, we even up, make sure we're even, and then we pay out all of the, the rest of the 12 months. So if you're still getting, in June, you're getting three paychecks worth, we run three separate payrolls, but then we liquidated it all before the end of the fiscal year. So in July, we liquidated it all anyway. So there's some there's some uh, there's some pros and cons with that method. Uh, we feel like, based on where we're at right now, the 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 problems that we run into. So I, I think original intent is well, we're going to levelize paycheck. Right? And so let people know, anticipate what they're going to be able to get each month. Because in the school calendar, you do have long months and short months. So uh, when you get paid in March, you're, you're getting paid off in February's hours. Those are usually long hours. We usually have a lot of school days there. Uh, but then when you get paid in April, well, we've got Easter and we've got spring break sometimes. And that becomes a short month. And so you do have a lot smaller paycheck. And then I think initially when we used to pay out in June, July, and August, the intent was, well, you've got summer paychecks coming. The, the negative that comes with that, though, is we really are banking. We're we're taking their money. You work these hours, and I'm going to hold this money, and I'm going to give it to you when I think you need it. And I'm going to give it to you all in June, right? So, and then in school year, now you're getting less also because we are, in essence, escrow and are holding on to uh, uh, three twelfths of their of the paycheck. So. Because we're moving to the new software, we're going to have a few new capabilities, and so what we're going to be what we're what we're doing is we'll not do the one twelfths anymore. So we'll do we'll actually do so we'll create your we'll create your calendar when you're clocking in and clocking out using the electronic platform that will be reconciling paid leave and unpaid leave, and then at the end of the month you'll actually have a check based on well, how many hours you worked that month. Okay, now. Because of that con, uh, that does create ups and downs for people and different paychecks, different amounts each month. One of the things that we're going to be able to do is create um, what I call a split deposit. So rather than me holding their money and saying, I'm part of you, I'll give it to you when I think you need it, we're going to help and counsel them to be able to say, okay, if you would like three twelfths of your paycheck, we can set up a percentage of each paycheck to go into a separate account. Uh, 
Christmas holiday account, right? What you used to call uh, a separate savings account or a checking account, or we could just do a flat dollar amount and say, I want my first hundred dollars to go into this account. So we'll help people be able to, in essence, equalize that bank over time, but with them getting their money when they've earned it rather than us holding on to it. Uh, the other, the other piece now that that is really different is because we hold three twelfths of their paycheck back, then we have money to to pay health insurance premiums for those folks enrolling in our health insurance plans through the summer. Uh, we still have to be able to do that. So now what we'll do is instead of holding three twelfths of their entire paycheck, we will take an extra three twelfths in health insurance premium. So basically we say, okay, over a year, you'll pay this much in health insurance premium. We divide that by nine instead of by 12. And we'll take that through the school year so that we hold it and, and give it back and, and use that to pay the health insurance premium then over the summer, which I don't like that either, but now we're holding a little bit of their paycheck to pay summer premium instead of holding a whole lot of their paycheck and giving it to them all in June. So there, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big change, um, and it's going to take a lot of education and uh, working with staff to make sure that they understand it and and, and it um, gets implemented the right way. But at the end of the day, the things that it gives us is the ability to be flexible with people's schedule when we do need them to maybe work extra time because of in-service training or new student moves in and we need to add some time. You know, or, or a student moves out, we need to adjust some time, things like that. So it allows us some flexibility there, and it, and it puts us in a situation where we can efficiently be accurate and responsive with their paycheck and the hours they work. So um, that's the direction we're going. I uh, welcome any, any feedback or questions. Uh, with this plan, if we start school, middle of August, and they start working, they will get an August paycheck? So we're playing with that right now, and as we set up payroll calendar, um, those are some of the things we're looking at. It may be that we do two August payrolls for them, or we look at instead of right now they're on the 25th, we may back it up to an earlier date for that pay group. So they may end up, we're trying to adjust for that, because it because that. It's so hard to tell somebody you don't get paid until September yeah. or whatever. Right. Right. I'm so, just curious um, how, you know, since we've gotten their information, how much is required? How much have you sought? I mean, how, what, can you just talk about the coordination and yeah. collaboration with Amsterdam? Um, yeah, so I've worked with Melissa in previous roles and, and they're so great to work with. I've worked with other auditors too. They're, they're great to work with. Um, we have a when there's questions, we call. When when we need help, they're they're a great resource. Um, so the coordination, even things like this, and, and talking about how we do our, our payroll, that were one of the first contacts that I had was to talk with them and get their opinion upon okay, what's the right way to do this. Um, so they're they're just they're a good um, consultant with us, and they're also good at holding us accountable to doing the right thing and doing it the right way. What other districts run this type of process with? Virtually all of them. In, in talking with KSB, there's, there's, um, you couldn't come up with a district our size that's doing an annualized. Um, I know that they're out there uh, because in talking with Skyward and, and even when we were vetting other, other vendors for our ERP, uh, they were able to tell us, oh yeah, we can get you in touch with this district in Wisconsin, they're doing it, or this one. Actually, it was more of ones that used to do it and have made the switch are the ones that I talked with. But yeah, um, it, having not talked to every district in the state, I would tell you my experience says most of them pay based off the hours that you work that month. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've done three previous districts, but this, this, weekend, this was the first one that I've come to, and that was one of the first conversations that Chris and I had. Was, you know, this this creates you know, a lot of work in our, our payroll department in terms of just making sure how that, that functions. So when, you know, when he came on board, that was the first thing that he was uh, definitely looking at. Uh, we, uh, we run two payrolls now, yes. the 15th and the 25th. Right. And 
have you talked about having a twice a month pay or um, not so much twice something? a month pay, but it but it may be depending on how things shake out. It may be a third payroll that we that we run. That so this group may be a third payroll. So right now we pay subs and folks who who we have a, a group of people that we pay based on the hours they work anyway. They're under they're working under 18 hours um, uh, a week right now, and so we pay them on the 15. So we get a time card, pay them on the 15, and then right now certified teachers who there's actually a statute that says for teachers you can you don't have to pay them within 30 days of their work you can you know do the summer paychecks and things like that we have historically lumped the non-certified folks into that group too and so they're all in a 25th payroll we may end up having to separating those out so the non-certified or might be a different date or it might even be the same date but, but physically inside the computer it's two separate payrolls that you are there other districts that pay bi-monthly? You know, I don't know. For the non certified snap, I'm not sure. I'd have Is to do a little bit of to that. <coughs> Is there pros and cons to that? Um, there would be. Yeah, there would be pros and cons. There, it, it would, um, like Craig is saying, getting, getting paycheck quicker, especially on that first one. And, and we do that right now for like certified teachers. We, we allow them to have 13 paychecks in their first year so they can, they can get one early. Uh, there would be pros and cons. One would be workload. I think as we get moving and we get into this new system, I would tell you right now the way we do things, there's no way because it, it takes a whole month to get all of those reconciliations done manually. As this becomes automated, then I think we can have a conversation about whether you could do uh, bi-weekly or semi-monthly pay, payrolls. Years ago when we started our calendar after Labor Day, the 25th of September wasn't so long. But now that we're yeah. in the middle of August, that's a long stretch to get paid. The 25th. Absolutely. I know that that 13th shit paycheck helps. Yeah. Change the thing Yeah. It, it, it will be, uh, and this is really the first time we, I mean, we've we vetted it out, and this is the first time we're, from here, we start doing a whole lot of education with folks about what, what, the, what the changes might mean for them and how we can help them create a situation where they're using their money to equalize over time instead of us holding them. Good luck with that migration. Yeah. Sure. Board policy updates. 
uh, the board will consider for approval the following recommended updates. Uh, all of these came from. Now, these, these are the policies yeah. uh, that we went over last week. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve the recommended board policies. I second. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Any quick discussion? Let's move on. No discussion? All right. Okay. All right. All right. So on the board policy about changing the number of days from seven to three calendar days, is that I'd like to discuss that a little bit. Okay, discussion. We're on discussion. Uh, that policy is not recommended by the KASD. Uh, the reason is that it's problematic not only for board members but for the community and the administration because uh, if if that information is out on a Friday, then you don't want to have that one business day depending on what time on Friday. Um, we've had some come on Fridays. Um, it makes it difficult to get that out. Um, also, if there is an issue that we need to talk to the administration about, or the community hasn't found out about it until late, if they don't know about it on Friday or Monday, I guess. It just, if there's any concern or things that didn't give administration a chance to Adjusted. I mean, that's what their um, opinion was, and that's, that's why they don't rec they recommend at least seven days. Um, moving from seven to three is a big jump to change our expectation. I mean, that's been an expectation for decades and to change it. Um, and I know there's a few districts, but there are a lot of people districts too. Uh, the majority of the people with KSB has that in their policy. <coughs> so I just don't know that's a, a good policy for us to change at this point. Just as a follow-up, I have also visited KSB. I'm not sure who you visited. Uh, the legal department. Uh, I, I visited with uh, the uh, KSB staff, and they indicated that there's very few districts who have uh, one of the And in fact, if you remember the last month, I included uh, all our league uh, there were some, but they don't know the all of them. Yeah, they all have four. So, yeah. And they all have three days on there? Yeah. So if you, have, if you want to go back, we can pull that out. So. Yeah, I'd like to. There's a motion on the table on the table on the table on the table table on the second. It's, it's still a discussion, though, isn't it? Yeah. But the motion that we're going to go along with the movement of seven days to three days, the board, uh, if we feel like there is not enough time to discuss and do background. We always have the ability to table it until the next meeting. Absolutely. Yeah, so many times it's brought to us in anyway, a right. work session and we don't put it on until the next meeting yeah. anyway. So. Right, we can always table it. Okay, any more discussion? Um, the only thing I wanted is one word change. Okay. Right. So if we would just reword or 
This is just a form that, that as someone is considering that, it is just a conversation with parents and the students just to make them aware that there are ramifications. Yeah. So, Second discussion on top of vote. All in favor of the uh, motion to say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Anybody abstain? I'm just the one. I'm the one. Anybody abstain? Nope. Okay. So please vote electronically the same way you voted. It passed six to one. All right. Next item is the Wapland Secure Entrance Bid. We talked about I think the last time we met. Well, the issue. Yeah, this, well, this is just your uh, approval to, uh, you know, uh, if you refresh your agenda, the yeah, freezer, what? Just pull it down. Just pull it down. Okay. Okay. We'll still need to refresh it it won't show up on these. Yeah. Okay. So, a refresh. Uh, yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we're going to do that. So, do you want to stick with the wall? We have moved the water freezer, so we don't go to that or something wrong. Yeah, the freezer is the last of the two freezers. Okay. I don't have it on my thing yet. Yeah, that's yeah, a good question. You're going to have every time that you change. Yeah, go ahead. 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 Go yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever it's right. it's right. it's right. it's right. it's right. so maybe there's a, okay. That's all right. So we're going to walk in freezer bid yeah. approval. This is the approval to uh, consider yeah. the walk in freezer. two walk in freezers. Yeah. And I, I think you have uh, the information there, the recommendations uh, in terms of, you know, we just started the process to make sure that we get uh, our nutrition staff uh, current, you know, just re, re upping all equipment. Uh, we have $60,000 that they get uh, wanting to do uh, some freezers. Uh, the two freezers, one at Roosevelt, one at Lincoln. Uh, one at Roosevelt will just be replaced. There will be some concrete work there. Uh, the one at Lincoln is currently the freezer that is here, but because the one here needs to be replaced, we'll be uh, moving that to the actual Lincoln school, which would be really much more handy than uh, and the one percent was what you found, Chris. Chris so there know. really is no discussion. I, I did not view the numbers. Is that a one percent? Yeah, it's it's uh, actually about four yeah. percent. Okay. Yeah, so it's over the one percent. Right. So just for future reference, Craig, I think that's a good point. And I, I was just so. going yeah. uh, mm -hmm. if we can go local with local vendors or businesses and look at that one percent, I would like to make it. And in that situation, they would have had to match the right. load in. It's good or no? It's good or no? Right. Ed, are you entertaining motion? No, go ahead. Yes, I'd please. like to move that we approve the walk in freezer recommendation of the whichever service that is. Some of our restaurants. Yes, yeah, some of our. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? What uh, it's replacing one, or you, we're continuing to use one, right? We're replacing, replacing two. Replacing two. Replacing the one that is currently sitting at Roosevelt, and then we'll be replacing the one that is currently at Rockwell that stores Lincoln's food. Lincoln does not have a freezer at their site, but instead of replacing here at Rockwell, we'll be placing it at Lincoln. Okay. So those two are they? They're currently working, or they? What's their our well, I, I hope they're working, but they're, I think, Russ, you probably say, are we, are we working on Okay, so Roosevelt's is, about to fa Roosevelt's is about to fail. So the plan that uh, Jessica and I worked out was we're going to take uh, and look at Roosevelt's first, getting their place. And our plan is, is to be able to move, take food out, get what we need, store it in the freezer that, I'm saying this backwards. 
Roosevelt's is the one that's the closest to fail. We're looking at doing the Lincoln Freezer first. Then we can take the food that's here at Rockwell, move it to Lincoln, take the food that is at, Ro at Roosevelt, move it into the one here at Rockwell, then redo Roosevelt's. That way we've got storage for all of them. And in doing so, then once we get the other two in place, the one at uh, Roosevelt will all be already be the inhalation, and the one here will be removed too. So those aren't going to as so close that we can sell or or donate to places that need to be We can fair cross fair that bridge, but fair that is what we're patching them right now. It's sort of cross your fingers and hope that they, they stay because we're working on them on a pretty regular basis. So most of the stuff that we have, we get done with it. We've got to do that. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to call the vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Motion passes. Uh, 7 to 0. Please vote electronically the same way. Now we're having to call off on secure entrance bid. Yeah. Uh, this is just, uh, once again, we're, we're trying to finish up our secured entrances. Um, this is a bid um, that was just uh, recently taken care of. <coughs> All work for construction has a low bid, 28.5. Uh, we're recommending that uh, they, they get awarded that bid to complete the uh, lot of security. Okay. Make a motion to approve the low bid for all work for construction and secured entrance for a lot of elementary. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? And nothing has changed on this since we discussed it last time. Correct? No. And, and you actually have a uh, kind of a drawing. Right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Good. Thank you. Any discussion? I'd just like to add, um, love that Mr. Murder came in that low. Yeah. Like I mean, that yeah. We were we were we were just really happy that that actually works. Sometimes bits work for your favor, and sometimes they don't. You know, yep. But uh, that's one that definitely. Uh, you jump on those chances. Yeah. So. And they've done, they've done a lot of work for us, and we're very satisfied with what they've done. Great. All right. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Please vote electronically the same way. Motion passes 7 to 0. Roosevelt, Roosevelt HVAC is approved. Okay, uh, once again, just uh, another, another bit for the uh, Roosevelt. This, this one is a little bigger. Um, you know, the freezers and secured entrances. Um, been through the, the uh, process, and uh, you know, we did have uh, two bidders. And uh, last Corporation uh, came in on, at the low bid. Uh, and, uh, recommending that we award the project to last one. Uh, there are some considerations that I, I do want the board to look at. Um, this is, an, you know, I have gotten uh, one, school 101 from Rusty uh, on uh, controls and uh, systems and, and, and some areas. Um, I think, Rusty, if you just want to come up and talk a little bit about uh, what we would like to do is look at uh, Going upgrading a little bit, uh, spending about sixteen thousand more uh, for uh, some, some controls that we're familiar with, as well as the systems. So, more about the yeah, real quickly. So, in Glassman's bid, looking at their base bid on the Daikin equipment and reliable controls, they were two million nineteen thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars. Um, we don't have any Daikin heat pumps in the district. We don't have any Aon heat pumps in the district. Um, so as far as what we have in the district, as far as heat pumps, we don't have any of that equipment in here. But we do have Aon rooftops, and we do have uh, other Aon equipment. And also our, at the middle school, our um, air makeup is the same equipment. So we carry parts for Aon equipment for rooftops and for our, um, air makeup. The other piece of that is, is our uh, software that we use to control all our systems that we're going to do is called Insight. It's an Insight program made by Siemens. Uh, looked at Reliable, uh, we were asked, or I was asked, 
a long time ago to uh, try to make the bidding process more competitive so we knew where we were at. Um, we've done that. We basically spec'd out um, the bid so that we could keep that and if then if we had differences we could bring those in and justify those differences to you. So what I'm bringing in to you is I've got AON equipment currently, I've got the Siemens program, which is inside currently for controls, and I've got it in the middle school, and I've got the, and I've got part of it in the high school. As we move forward with this, one of the things that I was charged with when I was coming here was trying to consolidate to where we were using similar platforms and using similar equipment throughout the district, so if we weren't having to keep as much parts on hand. So for $16,000 more, we could do that. We could go with the inside program that we're already currently using, trained on, know how to use, and we could also keep at least our rooftop units and our air makeup the same as what we have, so we're keeping the same part of this there. Um, I don't have a press work on the heat pumps, but if we go with the Daikin equipment to modify it to take the inside program, it would actually, or the inside controls, it would actually cost us another 2000 above that 16 to get the terminal strip and the diking equipment that we needed. So it's actually cheaper to go with the Aon with what we need to run the Siemens platform than it is to run the diking equipment with the Siemens platform by $2,000. So that's where we're wanting you to consider the upgrade of the $16,000 from the $2,019,818 to, excuse me, 2 million, $19,818 to $2,035,860. And it says in there that, you know, we've got some training and stuff to go with that, but I can tell you that the two platforms, if you jump back and forth on platforms, you'll know what I'm talking about. You're good at one and not the other. And Scott's already trained at Insight. That's what they had at uh, Solomon when he came out of Solomon. That's what I was using in Scott City. That's what I'm familiar with. And that's what we've got Brooke trained in, who's doing all of our, uh, as far as our uh, scheduling. So I don't know if, I think we'll get our 16,000 back just in just in that. Just not have to rerun another system. Questions? Here's One question I have. Go ahead. Um, would this be, based on our audit discussion, would that be on this budget year? So if we approve it, are we wanting the financial to come in next budget year? Because right, because it would be done in August, so we could actually put it in the next budget. Do we want it? Yeah, it will. Yeah. Perfect. It'll be next year. Yeah, it'll be done on. But like the way that the am I understanding that correctly? The that we need to if we're approving this today. You would, you know, we're going to approve it all this year because the work starts in this year. Yeah, we're we're approving it. We just need when, to make sure in the minutes. She was referring to it like when we maybe uh, the schedules are different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very good. Sorry. So these services that. Good question. Uh, is it well, that was one of the things that when we visited with uh, Glassman, actually visited with them quite length on Thursday about this, and uh, the service one of the things that they wanted to see in it and i confirmed it today and they've got an email today stating the same thing when they do the training for the insight program that's built into that glassman's techs will be trained right along with our staff so that glassman can service it in town and we don't have to bring people out of which talk to do it so that was one of the things joe really wanted to see in there and asked for and they've agreed to do that and he's already got a training schedule sent to him and is currently we have which still people come in we've had yes. people out of five star mechanical and then also out of bcs that have been working with me on the uh, insight now uh, bcs has provided training for us in the past they actually even had training set up because they have the yeah, and as you said bcs can, comes into the district and has done training and i know when i was at the middle school they were on call from wichita a lot coming back in and up well, a lot of what you saw when that first year, they would have been also, it's all under warranty, so any of the warranty stuff that we had them coming back in that first year. For the last few years, I've had BCS out here very, very uh, seldom except for training. Um, I haven't had a lot to do with, with BCS as far as anything, as far as hiring. Actually, I've been using more local vendors right now than I have them. 
that would be my recommendation. Yeah, and that's part of what Joe and I talked about was is that that training would go into Glassman so that they could work on the, on the control side of it too. I would support doing all the collection of controls out of Glassman and the local rather than PCS out of Wichita. Rusty, is there anything with this that brings in uh, ventilation outside air? Yeah, air that's down? the air maker that I'm talking about. There'll be two units that set up on the top that'll be ducked out to the heat pumps, and then they'll do all your makeup that air. Room, that's all rooms will be? Yeah, every room will be tied into that. Yeah, that's 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 the standard now. I mean, when they engineer it, they've got to engineer all that makeup air into it. Is there anything out there for COVID? Because of, they're looking for outside ventilation that Basically, all they're doing is up in the CFMs that they're bringing into the building. There's really nothing there that they're changing on that. That that's all been figured into it too. And you'd have to. I'm not going to be able to give you the particulars on it. That's going to be what our engineer done. Thank you. Hey, Ron, are we approving the motion to accept the two million plus bid, or uh, I would um, like that. Well, that's February 20. and I met with Joe uh, last week, and uh, this is what I. Joe, is that honestly the, the low bid is going to be the low bid. Uh, the biggest decision really you have this evening is if you, you're interested in upgrading that 16000 And both alternates, both one and two? Yeah, so it would be the Glassman bid and the alternates. Yeah, it would be for two, two million, uh, what, 35, yeah. two million thirty-five thousand eight hundred and sixty. Presley, I think it was five years ago, we put in was it an air handler or something at Roosevelt that was a used unit that we upgraded and that obviously didn't work. No, well, about six years ago. No, it's actually well, longer than that. It's almost it's been over seven years now. Um, we had the chiller unit. Chiller, yeah. And they had the compressor go down on it. The chiller is still the original old chiller. The only thing they replaced on the chiller was the compressor. And part of the problem with that compressor we lost it right away at about within a year of putting it in and the problem was is the pneumatic controls on it were not controlling it and unloading it and loading it correctly so under while it was still under warning Glassman ended up putting another putting another compressor in on that uh, that compressor we got by with it fairly well we got the control issue straightened out once we got the control issue straightened out because we were already starting to leak oil on it and I was afraid we were going to lose it. But once we got the uh, control issue straightened out, we haven't had very much problems with it now. But so it, still wore out, it still wore out chiller with a refurbished compressor with a wore out evaporator because the, there'll be a cooling tower that will be added to, to this. And there's a, what they call a cooling tower on the top of, of uh, Wilson, or Roosevelt right now that just as wore out as the chiller. It's the same age. so. If you go up there, it looks like it's about to shake itself off the roof. It's so far out of balance and stuff. And they're really, if the dampers don't open right, we've got part of it locked open with two before's during the summer to make it cool correctly. So, yeah, it's. So, is that compressor something we can? I would entertain that to Glassman, but I'm, I'm betting what, if you didn't send it in to have it refurbished, it probably isn't really worth nothing. But uh, we can have that conversation with Joe. I, I think Rusty had me at War Out. So, I, I mean, everything's worn out. God bless you for doing all that. Can I make a motion? Yeah, yeah. President. I'd like to make the motion that we accept the Glassman base bid and also include those two alternatives, both the Siemens controls and the Aon equipment for the Roosevelt. Fantastic. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, call for a vote. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. Thanks for doing this. Thanks, guys. Motion we'll passes 7 to 0. Just uh, a timeline. This uh, we've been visiting with Joe uh, last week. Uh, the, they are planning, uh, Joe will be ordering equipment tomorrow. Uh, we'll be, they'll be manufacturing and we'll be kind of a March 1st deadline. I mean, a March 1st deadline in terms of maybe possibly getting started. Uh, They'll be working in the evening, won't interfere with school. Uh, so also just for board's purpose, at the next meeting, we will uh, talk about financing. We uh, will yeah. have uh, an attempt to uh, uh, 
do lease purchasing. I'll have you guys approve a resolution. Uh, we'll then uh, be getting terms sent out to banks and uh, getting uh, funding off into the support we'll be trying to do. And uh, we'll have there in March, we'll have some uh, of that. those terms, and then we'll look for the best terms. So I know worn out and worn out. Are you going to be able to keep the Roosevelt system going? Uh, I don't know. Someone that they were even having troubles over there. We, we are. Uh, we're having troubles. This cold weather is bringing out troubles all over the district. We, we've been at Roosevelt. We've been at Wilson. We locked our rooftop unit on the library right prior to this, and they actually got it finished up last Friday before the weather turned completely cold. Uh, Roosevelt had some issues in some classrooms today. So as it gets colder, it's going to definitely take a toll. That's where we were at. So. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank Rusty. Thanks, Rusty. All right, next item is the school calendar change proposal. Yeah, just uh, asking the board um, to uh, consider approval of uh, changing the end date of our school year. Uh, as we have talked about the Bathridge uh, assessment uh, being a big part of our school year, uh, the second training uh, we have tentatively scheduled uh, for May 24th which if you go to the calendar that would be the, the, the third to the last day of school. Uh, we're, we're asking that the board consider approving uh, changing our end date to May 21st. Uh, May 24th would, uh, we would still have staff report. Uh, we would be uh, completing our second day of fast bridge training for the district staff. May 25th, uh, we'll continue to work with staff, and that will be working with the data that after we have two days of training, we'll take the, our data and, uh, and, and make some decisions as we plan for the next year. And of course, May 26th would be a teacher work day. Um, we also, I also feel this is just uh, as we will have grinded our way through the college of the school year in land time. Uh, this gives us uh, a little early out. Uh, I think if you have had kids in school or you have been a, a school employee, you know those those days of May are tough as everyone is chopping at the bit to get out. I think this is the year to consider uh, chopping off some days. Uh, we have more than enough adequate uh, you know, days in our calendar or as far as the 1,116 hours. Uh, we won't use one as of as so far. Doesn't look like we'll probably have any issues this week unless we have a, the, the car, unless our computer call, you know, go to the crowd box. Okay. So, anyway, that's what I'm asking the board for this. Time. Well, it looked like the idea that, um, well, we talked before about burnout of administrators and teachers and et cetera, and, like, and students. And students, and I think you know, we need to watch out for those things. And I did uh, this, I ran this through the, our Teachers Association. All right. Thank you for including yeah. that in there. That makes, yeah. to me, that, that, that makes me feel very good and yeah. supporting. So I'd like to mo make a motion that we approve the proposed calendar changes second. as presented. All right. Motion and a second. Any more discussion? So the Teachers Association didn't see anything wrong with like that. I know the first day of school, the high school went all, and middle school went all day, and the elementary's went a half a day, but this will be getting everybody out yep. at the same, same time, day. they're okay with that. Yeah. Oh, really? cool day that day. Yeah. But what, what I really needed to check the teachers is we were adding more in service. Yeah. That, that is, uh, and then technically the number of days, that's, that's your call, it's not their call, but it's not being served. Well, I think we're all, if we're meeting our, 1116 hour requirement and for special educators that normally they would work those days we're going to use those days to train for them as well to make sure that they don't have a, a short school year oh i yeah. think so good we have plans for them as well all righty okay everybody else is packing up for discussion so i'm going to call for a vote if all in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. aye. three votes Anybody who's saying? All right, motion passes seven to zero. Please vote electronically and say. I'm gonna make a motion on the next two, six, five, and six, six to table those to the next meeting. We're already at 9.15 and there's gonna be a fair amount of discussion. 
um, and into the next session, I think, on that. So unless, unless administration has an issue with that. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Yeah. A motion and a second to uh, push the uh, discussion of the two-year administrative contracts and the district administrative contracts to the next meeting. Is there any discussion? We, with the uh, last cancellation, we moved the, the one back on the net. We moved the one to get the energy out where we moved the district uh, con uh, extensions back another meeting. Where that'll look like we're moving them back a month rather than just two weeks. So, yes. Because the recommendation two weeks ago was the board to do that the district contracts. Yeah, and I've, I've included uh, the building. Right. I guess concerned. That's a good question. Is it a good way to kind of jam up the weight? No, there's no. Okay. Unless well, you're not going to approve the brief. Oh, Greg's good point. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it's not a problem. So, a motion and a second, and we've had some discussion. And I see anybody else want to add for more discussion. So, I'll go for a vote. Uh, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Any opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay, we can pass this. Uh, it's uh, six to one. Ron, you said you got with the bond yeah. group that they're going to talk about the next meeting, maybe? Or well, I'm not going to you uh, what they consider would be a logical next step. Um, looking at a perception survey. That will that will take place at the end of the We'll talk about facilities. It's not, it doesn't encompass everything about facilities. It's just really kind of a perception of of how our district is and overall and a lot of different facets. Um, I have been part of successful bond districts and I will tell you that those things are important to know in advance that the uh, job you're doing, that we're doing a good job. So we're all perceived uh, that, that we're doing a good job. That might be the last thing I have to know that you're ready to take it. So that's uh, what I'll be bringing, just a survey. To They're the not necessarily presenting. You're just bringing no, they are not. It's just, I will be bringing you a survey that I have been working with them. To clarify, this is a survey about the perception of people, people the perception the about the district yes. and the board, maybe, and something like that. Sure. Not, and it's whatever you want to include. I'll, I'll okay. have about 25, and if you want to see less or you want to see more, we can do that. Okay. So that's the next meeting we're going to be talking about. That. Yes. Thank you. All right. Just one time. With the uh, resignation of Vicki Guile and the uh, uh, what is the timetable uh, that we're looking at for that? Uh, we've had it advertised for two weeks. Uh, right now we have uh, six applicants. Uh, might possibly be getting some more. Uh, Jan and I just visited about that uh, today. We'll be uh, visiting with the OWAP and staff and uh, kind of setting up the schedule here uh, probably within the next week. One of the reasons I asked that if we're only getting applicants and one of the uh, uh, agenda items that we're putting off is the discussion on the two-year contract. Uh, I would really like to have that out there for new applicants. Maybe we can look at applicants with more experience level than we have uh, been able to get for the last couple of positions. And so I don't know if there's anything we can do with that. But I can definitely share with all all applicants and candidates that, that the board is, is discussing this. Thank you. Okay. I move to end the meeting. Adjourn. Do I have a second? Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Yeah. <laughs>